get right into a conversation that really has a little bit to do with me and my impact, my influence on you. I want to get right into it. You ever thought about who I am? Who I really am? I mean, I've done quite a few weird things in class. I've had some interesting conversations, kind of made you think in different ways. But have you ever thought about who Mr. Kimball really is? Especially about what I've been teaching. What if everything that I have taught you so far has been false? Wouldn't that be an interesting concept? I mean, it wouldn't be that much out of the ordinary. I already have had conversations with you where I've tried to test your knowledge, your strength. Remember that PRP, whenever I had you do something that you really didn't have to do? I was trying to see if you were strong enough as an academic performer to catch me, to question everything that I tell you. So, what if I've been teaching you saying some things that have been incorrect? or false. Well, let me frame this a little bit before you get too crazy and start wanting to throw me out of the classroom. What I'm really talking about is a continuation of those who am I lessons. So, I've made you think. I've made you think about the value of your life. I've made you think about different influences that you have, um, that you have on other people, that have other people have had on you. I've made you think about those influences. I've made you think about goals, you know, setting goals for your life and setting some parameters. Have some expectations of what you want to accomplish, the type of relationships you want to have. But what if those things have all been false? What if your life really is not important? What if today is really no different than any other day? And you can't be like Jared. You can't be someone who's going to change your life. What if your goals really don't matter? They don't mean anything. And what if you really don't have an influence on other people? I mean, then what? If all of those lessons that I've had you listen to and participate in journal about, go out and do things with, you know, crazy pieces of paper that have been wadded up all over your body. What if all that really doesn't mean anything? Then you're really no different than some of these other people. So what's the point? What's the point? If, that's, if none of those things really matter, then why did I have you do that? I mean, I pulled some pictures off of Google just to kind of look at people's facial expressions. And you're no different than this old man or this little baby. I mean, look at these eyes. The eyes of wisdom. The eyes of an untouched future. The knowledge that she must have. The ambition. The life that this man must have led. All of these people, full of hopes, dreams, they have expectations placed on their life. In most cases, the people I've shown you, I don't know them personally, but I know from looking at the dates that were listed on Google, most of these people have already passed away. They're gone. Their life has been and is no more. Some of their lives are, I'm sure, still continuing, and they've made some decisions, made some choices. But if I'm trying to teach you that there are expectations, that there are goals, that there are influences, what if I taught you all those things and everything was wrong? Everything was false. It's a lie. None of those things really matter. So what now? Again, look at the hope and the aspiration in these eyes. Maybe the confusion, maybe the hurt. I don't know these people, but they're no different than you. Maybe they were also lied to.
Who knows what these lives ended up being? I have no idea. So, I guess what I'm really trying to tell you is that uh, you don't matter. You don't matter. You don't mean anything. You don't matter. You don't matter. Those are three sad little words. But you see, that's the other side of what I've been teaching you. So if I'm teaching you that you have influence, you have goals, you have expectations, then the other side of that conversation is that you don't matter. If I'm trying to teach you that you do matter, then there's another side of the coin that says, hey, you don't matter. And there are people that really believe that. And if you've been told that, I'm sorry. But maybe it's true. Maybe you really don't matter. Well, if that's the case, and these lessons really don't mean anything, then go ahead. Do what you want, when you want, how you want, with whom you want, and as often as you want. I mean, if you really don't matter, then it really doesn't matter what you do. So, have at it. Walk out of this room. You don't need to hear any more. You don't need to walk that stage in a couple years, graduation. You don't need a degree. Go ahead. Play your video games, watch television, stay on the computer. I mean, if your life doesn't matter anyway, then what does it matter what you do? Or, the other side of that coin is, you do matter. And if you do matter, then your choices, every one of your choices, has an impact on somebody or something. I mean, you ever think about that? That's why so many people make their living trying to get your attention. I mean, how many people try to get your attention? You're the target audience. You are high school students. You are the target audience for today's pop culture. Everything is pointed at you, trying to get your attention. So, you do matter. You really do. So, why do so many people spend so much time and energy telling you what you should do, who you should be, what you should buy, where you should go? You know, these people that think that you matter, they tell you how to live, they tell you what you should believe, they tell you how you should spend your money, and honestly, it just never stops. They tell you what they believe you need to do. And it's noisy. There's so much time and effort spent on you, so many people bombarding you with information, with choices, with things that you are supposed to do. It's just noisy. And it's so noisy that you just don't feel like you have the time and energy or the knowledge to make decisions for yourself. So, you tend to allow other people to make decisions for you. You're their puppet. They control you. And you tend to let it happen. So, when you really think about it, it makes sense to let others make decisions for you. We've had experiences that you haven't. We know things that you don't. We're better than you. You're ignorant. You're lazy. You're thoughtless. Your desires are pointless. You don't matter. I do. I want to control you by only giving you enough information to let you feel like you know something. I want you to see things the way that I see them. And whatever you don't, I'm going to make you feel stupid. Or that your ideas are simply not worth anything. If you believe that I matter and you don't, then I win. You see, I believe that's what pop culture is telling you today. I believe that pop culture is trying to teach you that you aren't 
smart enough to make your own decisions. You're not strong enough to be the person that you were meant to be. I mean, do I have to keep reminding you about that PRP example in the classroom? Are you strong enough to know who you really are, to believe what you really believe, to shut out all this noise? See, pop culture wants to control you. So, if you really do matter, then stop believing these lies. You do matter. You do have a purpose, and it's not to be somebody's puppet. I believe you have something to do, so go do it. I believe you have something to say, so say it. You have a mind, use it. You have a voice, speak. You have hands, touch. See, I really firmly believe that all of these lessons that I've been teaching you about figuring out who you are, I believe they have a point. Someone is waiting on you to help them get better. It's your job. Help them to get better. It starts with you knowing who you are and what you want to accomplish in your life. That's what all these lessons were about. It's not so that you can control others and keep them small, but you must figure out who you are so you can grow them and set them free to be the best person that they can possibly be. You see, I believe that's who I am. I believe Mr. Kimball was put on this earth to let other people understand their value and for me to be that spark, to be that person in their lives that says, look, you do matter. And it's not because I want you to be my little puppet and I want to control you and I want to keep you small. No, it's quite the opposite. You matter because you have a voice. You have a mind. You have things inside of you that no one has ever experienced before. There's a quote that I love. It's, and I can't even remember who said it. But it says, God may have been looking for someone ignorant. Ignorant enough to not know any better. To actually get something done. See, what that basically means is, the world tells you you can't do things. People tell you you can't things. Teachers tell you you can't do the work. Your parents might tell you some things. People out in the community might tell you things. Your bosses might tell you things. And they all try to stop you from being the best that you can because they are going to keep saying, you don't matter. You're not important. Your thoughts, well, we've done it before and your thoughts are wrong. They're going to keep telling you that kind of stuff. But I really believe that God is looking for someone who is ignorant enough not to believe those things so that God can use that person to be better than what they currently are and ultimately change the world. So who is Mr. Kimball? I'm the one looking at you right now, and I'm telling you, wake up. Stop being lazy. Stop being selfish. Stop being ignorant. And figure some things out. Your life is probably better than what 80% of the world has right now. So why are you wasting it? I'm asking you, are you being the best person that you could be? You've had an entire semester with me. If you relate it just to the English classes, have you done your best with all the assignments, have you taken the initiative to learn things that weren't exactly taught in class or learn things that you weren't clear about that were taught in class? You have a whole list of terms, whether it's literature terms, whether it's reading terms, and you have a whole set of material. How much time and effort have you put upon yourself to make sure that you know this stuff? See, that's what I'm talking about. Most of the world says, oh, you're too busy. You don't have time to do all of this work. But most of the world hasn't seen what you're able to accomplish. 
And whenever you put your best foot forward with the academic side of things, think about how good you're going to be with your career, your relationships. But if you just do enough to get by, then you're always just going to do enough to get by. Are you being your best? Do you recognize your influence, the good, the bad? Have you realized that your relationships are what you make them? You have an impact on other people, whether it's your parents, whether it's your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, people you work for, even the government. Are you being the best that you can be? Are you setting goals for your life? If not, why not? If you don't have an end in mind, if you're not saying, hey, I want to accomplish this, then you're not going to accomplish much. You might accomplish some things, but if you don't have bigger ideas, bigger expectations for yourself, then you're going to get what you're looking for. And if you're not looking for anything, you're going to find it. But if you want something bigger, name it, and then go for it. You see, guys, I'm that teacher that wants you to be the best that you can be. It's up to you. Now go do it. Thank you.